Okay, so welcome to the final project for Excel. I have the instructions printed, so you can just print yours as well or follow along by splitting your screen. As always, make sure that you save it with underscore two instead of underscore one. So we'll get right into it. Step one, Carla Aranga is a senior account manager at Insight Healthcare Consultants, a consulting firm that works with hospitals, clinics, and other healthcare providers around the world. Carla has created a workbook summarizing the status of the consulting project for Everett Hospital. She asks for your help in completing the workbook. Go to the project status worksheet. Unfreeze the first column since it does not display information that applies to the rest of the worksheet. So we're going to click on that. We're going to go to view. We're going to go to freeze panes and unfreeze panes. So what a frozen pane does, so where it says freeze panes now where it was frozen before. So before what would happen is if you moved, this would move and these wouldn't. So we're going to unfreeze the pane so that everything moves together. Step two, in cell J1, enter a formula using the now function to display today's date. So equals shows the cell you're about to put in a function. Um, I'm going to put now and close the bracket like that and hit enter. And I'm getting this, but it tells me to apply the short date. So I'm going to go back to home, custom, and I'm going to go to short date. Step three, format the worksheet title as follows to use a consistent design throughout the workbook. Step A, fill cell B2, so B2. I'm going to fill the cell, which is the tipped over paint can, with dark red accent 6, lighter 40%. There you go. B, change the font color to white. C, merge and center the contents of cell B2 across the range B2 to H2. D, use auto fit to resize row 2 to its best fit. So best fit is when you get this straight line with two arrows, you can double, oh, there you go, on the bottom of it double click and it will resize the row above. So I was accidentally resizing row one, uh, but that one is already best fit. So best fit for columns or rows is to go to the bottom of a row, double click, it resizes it, and for columns it's to the right. And when you double click, it will resize it to the best fit. Step four, format the billing rate data as follows to suit the design of the worksheet and make the data easier to understand. So italicize the contents of cell I2. B, apply the currency number format to cell J2. Step five, format the data in cell A4 as follows to display all of the text. Rotate the text, oh, sorry, A. <laughs> Merge the cells in the range A4 to A13. So A4 to A13, we are just going to merge, not merge and center. So we'll click here and merge cells. B says rotate the text up in the merge cell so that the text reads from the bottom to the top. So I'm going to go over to my cells group here, format, and format cells. I'm going to go to alignment, and I'm going to move it up 90 so that... 90 degrees here, so it reads from the bottom to the top. D, remove, oh, C, middle align and center the text. So we're going to middle align and center. D, remove the border from the merged cell. So here's your borders. You're going to click on the drop down button and you're going to go no border. E, resize column A to a width of 4. So now that you're going to do a specific width, you're just going to get that thick black arrow pointing down, right click, column width, and type in 4. Step 6, format the data in row 4 as follows to show that it contains column headings. 
A, change description to use service description. B, apply the accent six cell style to the range B4 to H4. So that is accent six cell style. So here's your styles, accent six. C, use auto fit to resize column D to its best fit. So that's column D here. And remember, we go to the right and double click. Step seven, Carla wants to include the actual dollar amount of the services performed in column E. Enter the information as follows. A, in cell E5, enter a formula without using a function, so that's without typing any numbers in, that multiplies the actual hours, cell D5, by the billing rate, cell J2, to determine the actual dollar amount for charged for general administrative services. Include an absolute reference to cell J2 in the formula. So you're going to go equals and it's going to be D5 and your star asterisk for your multiplication and it's J2 but they say an absolute cell reference so you're going to click the F4 button if you don't have F4 you can just type the dollar signs in in front of J2 and, and hit enter so your absolute cell reference again will only specifically reference this one so that when we do B and it says use the fill handle to fill it down to E13 You'll notice D changes, so D6, D7, D8, because that's a relative cell reference. J2 is an absolute and never changes because of those dollar signs. Format the range E6, E13 using the comma number format and no decimal places. So we'll highlight that and we'll go comma and no decimal places. Step 8, Carla needs to show how much of the estimate remains after the service is performed. Provide this information as follows. So A in cell G5, enter a formula without using a function that subtracts the actual dollars billed, cell E5, from the estimated amount, cell F5. Okay, so we're going to go equals, and I know it's typed in E5, F5, but you're taking E5 from F5, and you always take from the larger number. So you're typing in F5 first, and then E5. B, use the fill handle to fill the range down to G13. And again, format the range using the comma and no decimal places. So I'm going to go to comma and no decimal places. Nine, Carla also wants to show the remaining amount as a percentage of the actual amount. Enter this information as follows. So in H5, enter a formula that divides the remaining dollar amount G5 by the estimated dollar amount F5. So equals uh, G5 divided by F5 F5, enter. Copy the formula in cell H5 down to H14, pasting only the formula and number formatting to display the remaining amount as a percentage of the actual amount for the other services and the total. So you're going to, instead of using fill handle, which would also work, we are going to use copy. So we're going to go copy, and you're going to paste it down to F H14, sorry, <clears throat> and you're going to use the formulas and number formatting choice. All right, step 10, calculate the project status to totals as follow. So in D14, you're going to type in the sum function for a range D5 to D13. So equals sum open bracket and you'll just type that straight in there D5 D13. That's a range, so it's including all the num all the cells inside that. Use the fill handle to fill the range over to G14. Don't forget your fill handle is the uh, little tiny cross that shows up when you hover over the small green square there. 
C, apply the accounting number format with no decimal places to the range E14 to G14. So E14 to G14 is an accounting number format. Okay. Step 11, Carla also wants to identify the services for which Insight has billed more than the full estimate amount. In the range H5 to H13, use conditional formatting and a highlight cells rule and it says to format values less than, so we'll click less than and 1% and the default is what we want to go with, so light red fill and dark red text. Step 12, Carla imported data about the consultants working on the Everett Hospital project and stored the data on a separate worksheet, but she wants to include this data in the project status worksheet. So copy and paste the data as follows. So we're going to go to the consultants, we're going to highlight all this, and we are going to click copy. Now we're going to go back to project status and paste the data in cell J3. Here's J3. And it says keeping the source formatting when you paste it. So we'll go up here, look at our paste options, and we'll hover. That's just paste. That's formulas, formulas and number formatting. Keep source formatting. That's what we want. So we're going to click that one. Step 13, Carla needs to list the role for each consultant. Those with four or more years of experience take the lead role. Otherwise, they take the associate role. List this information as follows. A, in cell N5 on the project status. Worksheet enter a formula that uses the if function. So we're going to put our equals in there for the cell to recognize that it's going to be a formula. If is a function, so we're going to type in if, and I'm going to open my bracket, and here you're going to see the things that you need to type in. So the logical test is M5 is greater than or equal to 4. Greater than or equal to 4 comma, space, and then B says if the consultant has four or more years of experience, display double quotations, lead, and then comma, space. C, if the consultant has less than four years of experience, display associate, so double quotations, associate, double quotations, and I'm going to close my bracket and hit enter copy the formula to cell from, N cell, uh, from cell N5 down to N13 using paste formula only. So copy and then we are going to highlight the range we want to paste it into and we are just going to choose formula only. Okay. Use auto fit to resize N. So again we go to the right, double click. Only moved a little teeny bit. Step 14, Carla wants to include summary statistics about the project and the consultants. Include this information as follows. In cell D16, enter a formula that uses the average function to average the numbers of years. Okay, so this one's pretty straightforward. Just equals average. It doesn't matter if it's capitalized or lowercase. It'll still take the words and the function. So you're going to type in the range there, M5 to M13, close the bracket to finish off the formula, hit your enter button. Step 15, make the 3D clustered column chart in the range B17 to H31 easier to interpret. So you're just going to click up here in the white, so because if you click down here you might get some separate elements on the chart, so make sure you click up here in the white. Change the chart type to clustered bar chart. So we're going to go up to our chart tools that show up. See how there's nothing that shows up there, but when you click in the white, you get these extra tools. Go to design and change chart, chart type. <laughs> go to your bar because it wants a clustered bar. That's the very first one that shows up, and that's what we want. So we're going to click OK. B, use actual project hours as the chart title. So the chart title is already there, so we just need to type in project. Okay. Step C, add a primary horizontal title to the axis title to the chart. So if we just get out of that and we click on our chart again, we see three options. That's chart elements, 
that's chart styles, and that's chart filters. So we're going to choose a chart element, and we're going to add an axis title, but not both. So we'll click on this little button to get our primary horizontal. And that one is, and if you triple click, it'll highlight the whole thing, ours. And I'm not going to click enter because it'll give me an extra paragraph on the bottom. I'm going to just click outside. And D says add data labels. So we're going to go back here again. And here are data labels right here. But it says in the center. So I can't just click here. It'll put it to the end. I'm going to choose my drop button and go center. So it went from the end of my bars to the center of my bar. Step 16, delete row 33. So we click to highlight the whole thing, right click, delete. This is one time that using the delete key on your keyboard actually wouldn't work. Rows and columns need to be right clicked and deleted that way. Step 17, go to the schedule worksheet. Rename schedule worksheet tab to project schedule. So we're going to right click, rename, project, hit enter. Step 18, each service starts on a different date because the services depend on each other. Enter the starting dates for the remaining services as follows. So in cell D6, enter a formula without a function, again that's without any words, that adds four days to the value in cell C6. So equals C6 adds four days. In E6, we need to enter a formula without using a function that subtracts three days. So equals C6 subtracting three days. In cell F6, enter a formula without using a function that adds two days to E6. So equals E6 and adds two days. In cell G6, we're adding two, d two days to cell C6. So equals C6 and we're adding two days. Okay, and step 19, copy these formulas that we just typed in here all throughout their ranges down to D9, E9, F9, and G9. So we're gonna go copy this formula and we're going to paste it here and it's saying just the formula. Formula, copy, highlight the right range, just the formula, copy, highlight the right range, formula, copy, highlight the right range, formula. In cell C11, enter a formula that uses the min function, so equals min open bracket, the range is C6 to colon G9, close bracket. And step 21 is in cell C12, which is right underneath, um, use your max function. So equals max open bracket and the same range C6 to colon G9, close bracket, and we are finished. So we're just going to take a look at the last two pages of the instructions to make sure that all the numbers look like they line up and everything looks similar. That is your final solution, so that is there just to guide you. Um, okay, again, so now that you're finished, make sure that you've so saved it underscore two, hit your floppy disk, and submit to Sam for grading. Great job.